Thanks for watching this replay of Travel Hacking 101 Live. All right. We're going to get set up here in just a few minutes and we will get started on tonight's topic. Hope everybody had a great weekend, Tuesday night uh, here in the Washington, D.C. area. It's been a very eventful few days. Uh, if you've been following the news, of course, and following the Travel Hacking 101 group. Uh, with all the news with United, more details continue to come out tonight, so I look forward to the whole story um, coming into the press over the next few days. Uh, as we get set up, just uh, go ahead and tell me where you're joining in from tonight. Uh, I always love to see the reach that Travel Hacking 101 has. If you're joining in, uh, the bourbon partaking, always, again, please share the bourbons that uh, you're drinking tonight. I'll share mine uh, here in just a minute. Gonna make sure that the group is updating correctly before we get started on tonight's topic. A great one for beginners. So many people get confused over this. I'm gonna lay out some of the common misnomers. A lot of the uh, common wrong verbiage that's thrown out is probably the easiest way to say it. Bismarck, North Dakota. Ooh, fine metropolitan area there. I hope it's a little bit warmer now that it's April. <clears throat> hey Dan, great to see you. Thanks for joining in as always. Uh, maybe you're going to fly a golf stream tonight, I'm not sure. Alaska, that's awesome. What time is it in Alaska? Good Tuesday afternoon, right? All right, I'm going to hit refresh one more time and then we'll get started. Um, all right. So, a few things that I'm going to do at each one of these uh, beginning of our Facebook Lives. Uh, number one and most important is introduce the bourbon of the night. I know it's Tuesday night, but that's just fine. Um, tonight, I have a 2012 Forrester birthday bourbon. It's 97 proof. Mr. Alan Hatcher from the group sent this to me uh, as a gift. Retail price is about $300 a bottle. I don't think I've drank a bourbon that expensive in a long time. So, uh, Alan, here's cheers to you. Thanks a lot. Oh, that is tasty. Wow. All right, the next thing we're going to do, uh, the top credit cards of the week. I made a post about this today. I'm going to talk about it because I get the question all the time. Um, so, the top two cards of the week are, are Hilton cards that have increased sign-up bonuses right now. The first is the no-fee Hilton credit card from American Express, uh, offering 80,000 points after $2,000 in spend in the first three months. No annual fee, best part, 80,000 points. Earn 5x spend at restaurants, gas stations, and supermarkets, uh, 7x points per dollar, uh, when I say X, at Hilton, and then you earn 3x points on other spend. Second credit card of the week, Hilton, uh, Honor surpass from American Express, 100,000 points after $3,000 in minimum spend. It does have a $75 annual fee, but on your one year anniversary, you're gonna get a free weekend night certificate good at almost any Hilton in the entire uh, network, which will give you a free night almost anywhere in the world. Uh, you earn six times points per dollar at supermarkets, gas stations, and restaurants, uh, 12 times points at Hilton properties. So if you stay at Hilton a lot, what a great card to have. Um, but this 100,000 point offer um, is pretty good. Um, the best news about the changes in the Hilton programs are the ability to pool points between 10 friends or family members for free that should come online sometime this month. So if you and a few friends uh, get these cards, get one of the cards, you can pool the points and very quickly the 10 of you can have a million Hilton points. You can go and stay um, at any Hilton in the world uh, for five nights and have a great time. So take a look at those. Um, always available uh, in the group at the pin post at the top. Uh, my moderator tonight, Miss Melody Tao, who you're going to see commenting a lot, is going to post a link as well to the Travel Hacking 101 cards. I get paid a commission if you sign up. I love uh, this group. I definitely appreciate the support. Please be responsible with your credit and protect your FICO score. Um, all right, so moving into tonight, remember the best question of the night is going to get six months of Award Wallet Plus uh, for free. I use Award Wallet multiple times every day. I track all my family, uh, family and friends programs and balances, expiration dates. Um, so please um, tell me where you're coming from. Ask a question at any time. I've got a real nifty moderator document that Melody is going to keep updating for me. So I see the questions real time. I'll answer a few questions as we go. 
um, and then I'm going to answer um, a full Q&A session at the end. Um, Melody just posted the link for those credit cards, um, and then a few times throughout tonight I'm going to mention things that we have links ready to go, and Melody's going to post the links in the comments as well as I cover those points. So three questions tonight. Learn to earn and redeem miles across airline partners. Wow. Uh, those of you who are advanced, this is all going to be refresher material for you. I hope uh, you might uh, remember a few things you've forgotten. For all of the newbies in the group, for my brand new people in Travel Hacking 101, now almost 24,000 people, we're adding about 100 people a day. Uh, this is one of the most confusing things that people get wrong, that don't understand, and because they don't understand, um, you miss out on huge value. So, three questions tonight. Where and how to credit your miles to airline partners? You may not even know what that means. I'm going to break it down for you. A few of the easiest programs, once you understand earning and redeeming, uh, to utilize to talk about uh, the strategies that uh, I'll lay out. And then the third one, uh, booking the same flight, the exact same flight, uh, using multiple airline programs that will give you more award seats in many cases. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, please tell me where you're coming uh, from tonight in the comments. Throw out questions. Melody will keep track. Um, and uh, I look forward to explaining this to everybody. So, um, you've probably all been at the airport, you've boarded uh, your plane, and right there on the boarding door you see uh, an insignia that says maybe Sky Team, Star Alliance, One World. You see it up on the board when you're waiting uh, at the boarding gate. Uh, the electronic board says, hey, Delta Flight 102, Air France Flight 2795, Air Kenya Flight 43.91, and maybe you've never thought anything about that. So what is this all about? Why do airlines have partners? Why are they members of what we call alliances? Um, it's all about two things in my opinion. One is increasing their route network. So if I'm in America and I want to fly to Nairobi, Kenya, uh, nobody in the States flies directly there. So Delta says, hey, it would be really great if we could sell all of our customers tickets to Nairobi, Kenya. Um, let's make a partnership with an airline like Air Kenya, who obviously flies there. And we can sell tickets on code share marketed flights. So that way, as an American customer, I don't have to buy two tickets. I can buy one ticket. Delta connects me onto an Air Kenya flight. I don't have to check my bag more than once. My bag goes all the way through. And I seamlessly fly from the United States to a destination like Kenya. So you increase your route network. You increase your ability to sell tickets, and everybody wins. Airlines get more money. I have a more convenient itinerary. So. Second reason are cost reduction. If you think about somebody um, like uh, Cutter Airlines who flies to Atlanta once a day, if they were not part of the One World Alliance, and we'll cover all three alliances, Cutter would have to um, lease from the airport their own uh, check-in desk. They would have to hire their own check-in staff. They would have to hire their own baggage handlers. They would have to buy their own luggage carts to drive and unload the airplanes and uh, shift the luggage around. They would have to build and operate their own lounge, cost after cost after cost. Because they're members of the One World Alliance, or because they have other partners who are maybe not inside of that alliance but work in Atlanta, they can go to them and make a huge cost saving reduction and say, hey, I'm just going to lease your services, I'm going to lease your crew, I'm going to lease your ground handlers, and uh, we're going to save a whole bunch of money because I don't have to set up this entire operating infrastructure at an airport where I only fly once a day. And again, the airline wins. And because the airline has that huge cost savings, they in turn should, should pass that on to us, the consumer, and our ticket prices stay low. So a win-win for everybody, the consumer and the alliance, in a perfect world. There are hiccups, sometimes uh, interline baggage checks don't work and you do have to check your baggage twice, things like that. <clears throat> but what I'm concerned about is, as a frequent flyer, this is a huge win for me because I can earn miles across these partners and I can spend my miles across these partners. So what am I talking about? Um, let's cover the three big alliances first. So you've all heard or maybe you haven't of Sky Team, Star Alliance, and One World. These are the three big alliances that major airlines have organized themselves in and sometimes smaller airlines who only operate regionally. It means if I fly one of those airlines, um, I can earn miles on any of the other airlines inside of that alliance. So just because I'm flying Delta does not mean I have to earn Delta miles. It means I can earn miles in any other program also inside of the Sky Team Alliance. Just because I'm flying American Airlines does not mean I have to earn American Airline miles. I can earn miles in any other One World program 
with a few exceptions that uh, I'm not flying on a super cheap discount economy fare that does not earn miles in another program. I'll talk about how to check that here in a minute. Um, and then I'm not flying a bulk fare. Uh, also, I'll talk about that in a minute. But it's really great because um, if I'm flying S7 Russian Airlines, so S7 is actually a member of the One World Alliance with American and British Airways, I'm going to fly them one time when I'm going into Moscow or when I'm going into St. Petersburg. I have no desire to earn S7 uh, miles. I'm going to credit those to a program in the One World Alliance that I use. So I'm going to credit, that is the verb that we use, my S7 flight to my American Airlines account. I would physically put my American Airlines frequent flyer number on the S7 ticket or on their website so that that flight was credited to American Airlines. And a few days later, sometimes a couple weeks when you're flying partners, you're going to log in and on your American Airlines transaction history, it's going to say S7, Moscow to St. Petersburg, you earned 504 miles or something like that. So that is how the mechanics of it actually work. And speaking of that, let's talk about um, some important things to know and some verbiage and terminology that gets thrown around uh, a little bit. So what's important when you're trying to work these partnerships, uh, the first word you're going to hear here is metal. So whose metal are you flying? Metal simply means what airline is actually operating the flight. Whose plane are you stepping on? So um, I'm flying on American metal means I'm flying an American Airlines plane. It's got American painted on the side. It's an American flight. So that's what metal means. The second one is um, code share. You've all heard this. Maybe you don't know what it means. It means that this flight is on a metal different than the airline that sold it to you. So this is an American code share on Cutter Metal. So American Airlines marketed and sold this flight to me, but I'm flying Cutter Metal. So that's what metal and code share mean. Marketed by means who sold it to me. The easiest way to tell that is something called the ticket stock, which is the first three numbers of your e-ticket 13 digit number. If you're curious uh, whose ticket stock am I on, i.e. who marketed it to me, check those first three numbers. You can Google it and find out whose airline ticket stock you're flying. And it's important to know what metal you're flying um, so that you know what physical plane you're getting on, even if it says American Airlines 5786. You're going to get on a Cutter Airlines airplane. A lot of confusion there. I'm going to simplify it. I'm going to summarize it um, here at the end. So uh, the verbiage that I'm talking about, number one, is credit to. Who are you going to credit this flight to? So if I'm flying Delta Airlines, remember I don't have to earn Delta miles. I can earn miles from any other Delta partner that allows me to earn miles on it, any airline in Sky Team Alliance. Who am I going to credit that flight to? That's what that means. Um, I've already talked about ticket stock and then um, the best way to find out who you should credit your flight to is a website called wheretocredit.com. Melody is going to put this here in the comments and there are two things you need to know. You need to know what metal you're flying on and you need to know what fare class you're flying. Uh, if you go and Google the Point Sky fare class, you're going to find an article I wrote that says what does a fare class tell you about your airline ticket. Um, not only does an airline or a single flight have economy, premium economy, business, and first, there are several different what we call fare buckets inside of each one of those classes. So you have an economy class ticket, that's great. That does not tell you your fare bucket. Are you flying a full Y fare, letter Y? Are you flying uh, a discount K fare? You need to know what fare class you're flying and you need to know what airline is operating your flight. Once you have those two pieces of data, you can go to wheretocredit.com, put in your airline, put in your fare class, and you will find out how many miles you will earn on partner airlines. So uh, if I'm flying a uh, Qatar Airlines flight from Doha to Kuwait City, and I want to know how many American miles I can earn on that because American is part of the One World Alliance, I go to wheretocredit.com, I look at my ticket, and I say, hey, I'm flying a K fare on Cutter Airlines. I type in Cutter or select Cutter, type in K. A chart will come up below that says, um, hey, on American Airlines, a K fare earns 50% of the miles that you fly, meaning the physical distance between Doha and Kuwait City. Very important to check because sometimes if you're flying super cheap discount uh, economy tickets, it will earn 0% of the miles you fly, and then you need to pick another airline like say British Airways, also inside of the One World Alliance. And that way uh, you can earn Avios, uh, which are very valuable here in the States. So you can also transfer Chase Points or American Express into Avios. 
Um, and that way you're not going to not earn anything on your flight from Doha to Kuwait City. So a recap of everything I just said. Airlines have partners to save money. What we care about is that I can earn miles across those partners. Because I'm flying an Air France operated plane does not mean I have to get Air France miles. It means I can earn Delta miles. All I have to physically do is put my Delta frequent flyer number on my Air France reservation, go to wheretocredit.com, put in Air France and the fare I'm flying, and then look at the chart that pops up for Delta. Hey, you're going to earn 50%, 75%, 100% of the earned miles. And that way, a few weeks later, you're going to look and say, hey, on my uh, Delta account, just went up 5,000 miles, but I flew Air France. That's great. That's what you want to do. If you have no desire to earn Air France miles, um, that's the way the mechanics of earning miles on partners work. The key is checking where to credit and what your fare class earns on that partner so that you don't accidentally credit to somebody who earns 0% on your fare class. I hope that was as clear as it is in my mind. Uh, Please uh, ask a few questions. Uh, it looks like uh, we got a few here that Melody put up. Um, so uh, I'll pick one. Um, Vlad says, which one of the Sky Team partners is best to credit to? I have a mailing address in both the US and EU. Is Flying Blue a better program for award redemption than Sky Miles? I'm going to hit exactly on this because many times, yes, it is. Um, Again, everything that I preach in Travel Hacking 101 should be goal-based, so where are you trying to go? So if Flying Blue charges less miles than Delta charges to go to that destination, you should credit to Flying Blue. Uh, assuming that the fare class you're flying on, say, Delta um, or China Eastern or any other SkyTeam airline earns miles. Um, so let's move into redeeming miles. Uh, on partner airlines, what I really, really like to talk about. So you've done the hard work, you've checked what uh, fare class is going to earn for your airline, you put in that program's frequent flyer number, and now you want to redeem. Um, here's the biggest thing that people get confused about, and here's the statement I read most often. Um, American Airlines, uh, as I've been saying tonight, and I'm trying to stick on this, is partnered with Cutter Airlines. So Cutter and American are in the One World Alliance. People say, I want to use my American miles to fly Qatar Airlines, Qatar Airlines. Uh, how do I transfer my miles to Qatar? There's no transferring. You do not transfer miles to Qatar. You will physically call American. You'll say, I want to book a Qatar Airlines flight uh, using my American miles. And the agent on the phone will say, okay, no problem. So you don't care anything about Qatar's program. Uh, and second, most important, you don't care what they charge for their flights. What you care about is the American Airlines partner award chart. So you're going to be charged based on the American chart, not the cutter chart. So number one, you're not transferring miles anywhere. If you're calling American, you're booking a cutter flight with American miles. Number two, you're being charged based on the American One World partner award chart. Melody has a link to that. She's going to put it here in the comments so you can go and click around on it. It simply says, hey, where's your origin? Where's your destination? Uh, I want to fly from North America to the Middle East. So I look at the American Partner Award Chart, and it says from the U.S., 48 contiguous states, to the Middle East is 50,000 miles in economy. So you're going to be charged 50,000 American miles. You're going to call the American agent, give them the cutter flight number, check if there's availability, and then American will ticket everything. You'll never talk to cutter. You'll never look at their award chart. Uh, people routinely write me and they say, hey, Cutter says it's 100,000 miles to fly from Doha to the U.S. I only have 50,000 American miles. Nope, stop. You're confused. Based all on American's partner award chart. So there's a bigger point here about what you need to do. You need to pick a destination that you want to visit. You need to see how many miles the program whose miles you're collecting, in my example, American, charge to go from your origin to your destination. You don't give a lickety split about what the airline who operates the flight charges. All you care about is the partner award chart or charts for the airline whose miles you're collecting. Here's another great example of this. Etihad Airlines, not a member of an alliance, but they have an absolute uh, huge ton of partner airlines you can redeem Etihad miles on. Every single partner has a different chart. It is airline specific. So their partner was Brussels Airlines, used to have a great deal until today, rest in peace, 32,000 transatlantic business class, it's dead. But you can go to Etihad Guest website, click on the British uh, Brussels Airlines chart, and it'll give you all the city pairs, and it says, hey, this is how many Etihad miles we charge to fly Brussels Airways. 
you call Etihad up, you say I want to fly this flight, you're looking at the chart, um, and that's how many miles it costs. And you go into Czech Airlines, it has its own chart. You go to South African Airlines, it has its own chart. Uh, you go to Alitalia, it has its own chart. So an example like Etihad, not a member of an alliance, but you can fly, uh, I think it's like 20 different partners, but every partner has its own chart. Compare that to American who says, we put all of our partners and everybody in the alliance together in one chart. All we care about is your origin and destination. And uh, here you go, click through and see how many miles it is from point A to point B. So something to be aware of. Um, and then the third example is British Airways that says, hey, it's distance based. We don't care who you're flying. What we care about is how far you're flying. So if you're flying from zero to 750 miles, like this city is physically less than 750 miles or 600 miles apart, it's going to be X number of avios, their own points. So you have airline-based partner award charts. You have region-based, like American. What region are you flying from to another region? And you have distance-based, like British Airways. So the three kinds of partner award charts. If you go to every airline, you click through their frequent flyer program, they're going to have these charts on there. They're going to say redeem miles on partners. It's really important uh, if you have a destination and you're looking who flies to that airport, that destination, uh, that you go in and find the individual partner page to make sure that you can redeem miles on that partner. So if you go and look at uh, United Airlines, they have dozens of different partners, some inside of the Star Alliance, some outside of it. Some of the partners uh, only share you code share tickets. Remember, United is marketing you the flight, but it's going to be operated by Cape Air, a Caribbean airline. Um, you can buy that ticket with cash on American, but you can't redeem miles for it. And on the Cape Air partner page, it will say you cannot redeem miles for this flight, but you can buy it with cash. Or you can earn miles on a Cape Air flight. Put in your United number on your Cape Air reservation. Depending on the fare class, you'll earn this many miles. But uh, you cannot redeem United miles for this flight. Uh, that's an example. You actually can redeem United miles for some Cape Air flights, but it's very route specific. Um, but a good example of what you need to do as far as research is concerned when you're looking to redeem miles. All right, so recap on the first question. That's the bread and butter of tonight. How do you earn miles on partners? You look up your fare class. You look up the metal, the plane that is physically flying you from A to B. Where to credit.com. Put it in the airline. Put in your fare class. Look at all the different airlines you can credit it to and see how many miles you're going to earn. Make sure you don't uh, do 0% for some of the discount economy fares. Redeeming miles. You're not transferring your home miles anywhere. You're just calling that airline whose miles you have and say, I want to redeem this partner. Um, and then you're going based off of that airline's chart, not the partner you're flying. So I have American miles. I want to fly Cutter. I call American. I don't transfer to Cutter. I get charged based on American's partner, charge, partner chart. I don't care how many miles Cutter charges in their own program. Let's keep all these things separate. If you understand what I just said in the recap, you're light years ahead of everybody who's starting this hobby. You're going to get incredible value because of how few miles some airlines charge to fly their partners, like the Etihad to Brussels transatlantic business class I just referenced. It was 32,000 miles round trip business class transatlantic. Um, Etihad today raised that, but those are the kinds of gems that you can find out there. Uh, some research I was doing recently for those of you who understand this looking at all of the Emirates partners I wrote off the Emirates program a long time ago I shouldn't have done that you can fly uh, airlines like Korean Airlines JetBlue Hawaiian Airlines and it does not cost very many Emirates miles something to keep in mind of and what's out there all right another question here um, before Melody tells me to uh, go on to the next one uh, Dan Ninen question about earn and burn I have 816,000 Delta Sky miles. That's a lot. You shouldn't have that many. I know that they frequently devalue their miles. I don't need, uh, I don't have a need to use them anytime in the near future. Should I try and get rid of them uh, by maybe selling them or is there a better way to use them? So you cannot sell your Delta miles. That's against the program terms and conditions. You risk getting blacklisted from the program. There is a huge uh, sub. Uh, subsurface underground black market called mileage brokers who do buy and sell miles I don't recommend doing that if you get caught you're gonna get blacklisted from the airline what I would tell you Dan um, is Delta charges a lot of miles for some partner airline flights but they're incredible flights so I would recommend you go and look at partners like Virgin Australia and you fly from LAX to Brisbane or LAX to Sydney in uh, their new business class maybe 200 300,000 Delta Sky miles book 331 days in advance 
and burn those miles right off. Uh, and that's a great example of using partner airlines to get a better flight, in my own opinion, than Delta One. Um, and it's uh, great to not have that many miles on the book. I also accept free flights as payment for my services, so please feel free to book me flights anytime you want to get rid of those miles. Okay, question number two tonight. Um, a few of the easiest programs to redeem your miles and points on. The first question I hit on is going to be what I'm going to talk about here. Um, so, Flying Blue. Flying Blue is the loyalty program of Air France, uh, KLM, and a few smaller airlines. Uh, like I just said to Dan, Delta charges a whole lot of miles to fly many Delta flights. Now, there still can be some value in flying Delta domestically. You can find flights from obscure airports to obscure airport for 5, 10, 11,000 sky miles, and it's a great deal. Overall, Delta charges a lot of sky miles to fly anywhere. So if I was going to be flying a Delta flight, I would strongly consider, based on my fare class again, the fare class I booked on Delta, crediting that Delta flight to Flying Blue and earning Flying Blue miles. A few reasons for that. There are some incredible sweet spots in the Flying Blue award chart. If you've read any of the blogs or sites that talk about it, including mine, Google the Points Guy Flying Blue, you're going to see an article I wrote called The Top Uses of Flying Blue Miles. 15,000 miles to Hawaii from the East Coast. So that is going to be on Delta Metal. So remember, you're earning Flying Blue Miles. I go to flyingblue.com and I type in Atlanta to Honolulu and it's going to show up Delta flights. I'm going to fly Delta mile, Delta metal, but I'm going to use flying blue miles and it's only going to be 15,000 to fly from Atlanta to Honolulu. How many sky miles would it cost to fly from Atlanta to Honolulu on that exact same Delta flight that I'm going to book using flying blue miles? I don't know, 30, 40, 45, 50,000 sky miles. I'm going to use 15,000 flying blue. So if I only have to use 15,000 flying blue miles, I'm going to do everything I can to earn those, include, hey, if I'm taking this next Delta flight and it's a, a pretty good fare class that's going to earn maybe 75 or 100 percent on flying blue, I'll put in my flying blue frequent flyer number um, onto that Delta ticket and I won't earn Delta miles. So one of the easiest programs is flying blue. I tell people this all the time. Go and research the program. Go to the partner pages on flyingblue.com. See what fare classes uh, Delta flights will earn you in Flying Blue Miles. And remember, uh, one of the three programs that you can transfer American Express and Chase and City at a one-to-one -one ratio into Flying Blue. So really easy to get a lot of Flying Blue Miles really quickly. If I'm just a few short and I have a Delta flight coming up, what a great opportunity to credit that Delta flight into Flying Blue. Uh, this bourbon's so good, I'm gonna have to take another sip. Oh yeah. If you missed the beginning of the broadcast, uh, one of the members sent me 2012 Old Forester birthday bourbon. About $300 a bottle. I'm really enjoying that tonight, so thanks Alan for that. And if anybody wants to send me any more bourbon, I'm definitely always uh, game for that. So one more program uh, before I go on to question three. Easy program to earn miles in and to redeem across partners is British Airways Avios. Uh, really fancy name for their miles. British Airways miles are called Avios, A-V-I-O-S. Uh, part of the One World Alliance. So if you're flying American Airlines, you can credit your American Airlines flight to Avios and you can earn British Airways Avios. And you can turn right around and book American Airlines flights with those Avios many times for cheaper than American charges. Um, I am an American Airlines Executive Platinum. If you follow the group, you'll know I have a love-hate relationship with them. Uh, lately, it's become so difficult to uh, use American miles for domestic flights in any way that I really want to. They charge far too many. If you want to fly Thursday through Monday, they're going to charge 30, 40, 50,000. Uh, so I strongly consider crediting my uh, American flights uh, into British Airways, even though I'm Executive Platinum, which means, remember, I'm earning 11 miles per dollar spent since it's all revenue-based, which can be a lot of miles. Um, it's just not worth it. It's just too hard to use American miles. So I'll go and plug in that fare class in British Airways and see how many Avios I'm going to use. Remember, like I'm going to Australia next month, Sydney to Melbourne, that's 4,500 Avios. I can earn 4,500 Avios from a lot of American flights flying domestically and then top it up from either Chase or American Express. So Avios, in my book, a lot of times worth a lot more than American Miles. So second best program to use uh, that's really easy to use to find partner award space 
Remember, if you're trying to fly American Airlines using British Airways Avios, you're never going to go to American.com. You're going to go to BA.com. You're going to search, uh, go into Executive Club. You're going to search award flights with Avios, and you're going to type in Atlanta to Chicago, and it's going to say 7,500 Avios. I don't care what American charges for that flight. I don't care anything about transfer miles to American. I go to BA.com. I use my Avios. I search the route on BA. I book with Avios. That's how the partner redemptions work. Let me get a couple questions here uh, that uh, Melly's typing up before I go on to the third one. Um, Kenny Hill says, wondering the best way to transfer to Eddie Hyde for first department over 1.6 million MX membership reward points. Uh, that's a tough one there because you don't want to earn, or you don't want to redeem Eddie Hyde miles for their first department. They charge some obscene amount of miles uh, for that. Um, wow, I would really have to think on that one there. Uh, some of the other partners you can book Eddie Hyde with. Um, well, Americans obviously the easiest one, but they're not partners with uh, American Express membership rewards. If you have a business platinum, I would actually look and see how much you can find that ticket for. Book it uh, with points and then get 50% of your points back, and you might come out ahead of booking it uh, anyway else. Um, a couple more questions. Um, and then uh, we'll move on here. So Rebecca says, uh, can you combine different mile programs, for example, Flying Blue and Sum Delta? No, great question. Overarching statement here. You cannot transfer airline miles between programs with very, very few exceptions. So she said, hey, if I have Flying Blue miles and I have Delta miles, can I put them together and get some kind of value? No, you cannot. And the same goes for the vast, vast majority of airline programs. Once your miles are there, they're there and they're not going anywhere. Another great point is you can only credit one flight to one airline. So say you book a Delta flight and you put in your flying blue miles uh, mileage number. Um, at a later date, you can't go back and request credit for Delta miles as well. They're going to know that you credited that to flying blue, and there's no way to double dip in that circumstance. Um, and then remember, on award flights, you're not going to earn any miles with a few exceptions. So traditional award flights booked with airline miles, Delta Sky Miles ticket booked with Sky Miles, you're not going to earn any miles no matter who you try and credit it to. The exceptions are if you book free flights using points like Chase Ultimate Rewards through their Ultimate Rewards portal, City Thank You Points through their uh, travel portal, Wells Fargo points, Merrill Lynch points, U.S. Bank Flex perks, luxury card points, or Barclay arrival uh, card points, or Capital One Venture points. Um, those airline tickets are treated as revenue. So if I go to Ultimate Rewards Travel Portal, I have the reserve card and book for 1.5 cents per point. Uh, it's free to me, and the airline thinks that I booked through a travel agency, and you will still earn points on that. Your trick is going to be going and finding what fare class it booked into so you know where to credit it. Just a little bit of side information there. Uh, somebody asks, uh, what is Flying Blue? Flying Blue is the loyalty program of Air France and KLM and a few other smaller airlines as part of the Sky Team Alliance. Uh, quick Google will tell you more you need to know about it, but it's a great way to fly Delta for free by earning Flying Blue points. Um, all right, final question of the night, booking the same flight using multiple programs to increase availability. This is a great trick, especially if you have a big family, uh, or maybe not even a big family. There's going to be, or there is four of us, but I only have to buy three tickets right now because my daughter's under two. If I'm looking to fly an American Airlines flight, and American Airlines um, has saver availability, and they're charging 15,000 miles uh, per seat, what I would do is first go to BritishAirways.com and see if I can book it with Avios for maybe 7,500 Avios uh, per seat instead of 15,000 American miles. Uh, so if I needed four seats and I went to BritishAirways.com, I typed in Atlanta to Chicago and they said, hey, we have two seats available with Avios for 7,500 Avios each way. I would book those two seats. Uh, that leaves me now, I still need two more seats because I'm a family of four, so I'll go back to American. And um, airline programs give their own members greater award availability than partners. So American Airlines may have four saver seats available uh, for that same flight, whereas they only gave British Airways two seats. And now I can book the final two seats with my American miles, uh, paying 15,000 miles each. So a recap of that situation, American Airlines, Atlanta, Chicago was 15,000 miles per person. That would be 60,000 American miles. Instead, I go to BritishAirways.com, search that same flight. They charge 7,500 Avios per person. So I book two seats for 15,000 Avios. Now I go back to American. 
and I search for two more seats and I pay 30,000 American miles for the final two seats. This works out sometimes really well, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you also need to be aware of the ramifications of booking on different ticket stock. Remember I talked about ticket stock uh, at the beginning uh, of the video. So two of us are traveling on British Airways ticket stock, two of us are traveling on American Airlines ticket stock. Um, if there's irregular operations, then uh, we could be treated differently. Um, somebody say, hey, you have to call British Airways to take care of that. So two of us would have to be messing on the phone with British Airways while two of us can talk directly to American. Uh, and different airlines have different rules when situations like that happen. Your best hope is that things go well, but at the end, instead of paying 60,000 American miles, I've paid 15,000 Avios and 30,000 American miles uh, for that exact same flight. Another great example of this is Korean Airlines. Uh, so they make a huge number of seats available to their own program members. Remember, you can transfer Chase Ultimate Reward Points um, to Korean. So I can use uh, Delta Miles to also book Korean. So what I might first do is look at Delta.com and search from uh, Atlanta to Seoul, see how many Delta Miles it'll cost. Uh, to fly that route, I might book it if it's less than what Korean is charging, and then I go over to Korean and I book the rest of the tickets using Korean miles because they have more award seats available to their own members. Uh, so I might that way either be able to A, save miles, or B, get more people on the same flight by using the different award seat availability from different programs. That's a little bit more advanced. There's a lot of different situations I could give. Um, like that but it's important to know that uh, you can use three different programs to book the exact same ticket and if the airlines are all inside of the alliance or outside of the alliance they're going to have different view and different availability into award seats um, but it's a really great trick to use um, in order to try and get as many seats as possible on a flight while saving miles so i hope that made sense as well um, i'm going to jump into some questions here because we're already going over time uh, let's see what uh, Melody has for me. Um, much of our travel is done during the peak times like holidays. This is from Kevin. I've never found partner award flights for these times. Is there a trick? Um, that's a really general question because partner award flights, what airline are you talking about? What alliance are you talking about? I can tell you several always have flights on Thanksgiving Day. Many have flights the day after Thanksgiving um, going international because Americans are traveling back to the States. Um, what I would recommend there is why you have points like I listed earlier, Chase Olsen Rewards, City Thank You Points, Wells Fargo, Go Far Rewards, Merrill Lynch Points because this is all based on the revenue fare of the ticket and you don't have to worry about award availability. The key right this, and I've said it a few times in the group, is the business platinum from American Express. 50% points rebate is huge. Um, I booked uh, Hawaii yesterday, if you guys saw the post. Emily and I are going to Hawaii. We're flying business class. American Airlines had a sale from Atlanta um, where Emily's parents are so we can drop the kids off. It was $1,100. So 220,000 American Express points to fly business class. But wait, I have the business platinum, so I get 50% of those points back. So for 110,000 points, we're flying business class round trip to Hawaii. That has nothing to do with award availability. It had nothing to do with peak travel time. I book based on revenue tickets and I can completely avoid that. So if you don't have something like those programs I listed a couple times to travel on peak award dates, you really need to do that. That's awesome. Uh, not so much to do with partner airlines, but just, hey, av avoid the availability programs problems by having some of these programs in your back pocket to book based on the revenue cost of the ticket. Um, Karen says, where do I find the fare class? Booked British Airways ticket flying AA metal, six business class fares on BA website. Can't find fare class for my tickets. Uh, if you go and you look at your receipt, a lot of the times you click on the e-ticket receipt, not just your confirmation page, but the actual receipt, you'll see it in there. Besides that, the easiest way is just to call the agent and say, hey, what fare class, fare class am I flying? Um, if you want to know the fare class before you're booking a ticket, say if you're doing a mileage run on a partner to try and earn elite status on an airline here in the States, um, matrix.iatasoftware.com will tell you the exact fare makeup. <clears throat> That's matrix, M-A-T-R-I-X, dot iatasoftware.com. will give you the entire fare class broken out really clear um, before you book a ticket. Uh, afterwards, sometimes it's just easiest to call uh, an agent and ask what fare class you're in. Um, another question here, uh, I'm a college student who flies back and forth between Harrisburg, 
Pennsylvania and Kansas City, Missouri at least four to five times a year? Should I stick to one airline and even try to earn status somehow? So not so much to do with the topic tonight, but that's fine. Um, no, I don't recommend earning status unless you fly the exact same route every single time and somebody else is paying for it. If you're a college student, you're paying for it on your own. Always book the cheapest ticket. Uh, four to five times a year is not enough to really garnish benefits from status, so don't worry about it too much. Book the cheapest ticket. Save your money. Um, airline status is too much. Hey, Anna Kerr just logged on. She said, hey, brother. Hey, Anna. Anna's a school teacher in uh, inner city Houston. God bless her and all the teachers out there. You couldn't pay me enough money to do what she does. Um, Wow, I tell you what, I sat in her pre-K classroom where nobody spoke English and she didn't speak Spanish and uh, watched her go through that for a day. I digress, but if you're a teacher, hats off to you. You really got a tough job. All right, uh, I'm going to get one more question here. Let me read through and get a good one uh, before we wrap up for tonight. If you did ask a question, I am going to go back through the comments on the video and I am going to go ahead and um, answer your questions later if I didn't get it to, uh, to you live. So, uh, last question of the night. Um, let's see. I'm going to read through these real quick. Uh, any tips on what to use the CSR bonus points for? Uh, pretty generic question there again. I, I preach it every single day. Make a goal and make those points work for you. I did write an article the last two years updated in 2016, uh, Maximize Chase Ultimate Rewards on the Points Guy. So Google the Points Guy, Maximize Chase Ultimate Rewards. You're going to see an article comes up with all my recommendations on the best way to maximize them. Personally, I would transfer to Flying Blue and then fly to Hawaii for 30,000 round trip. If you want to get tricky, here's the advanced stuff. Hawaii and the Caribbean are in the same region according to Flying Blue and they have an unpublished region-based award chart. They also allow stopovers on award tickets. So here's what you do. You position somewhere to the Caribbean with a cheap flight or a completely different ticket. You take off in the Caribbean using your flying blue miles. You have a stopover back in your hometown in the U.S. Stay as long as you want. You then later continue on from your hometown to Hawaii. You enjoy Hawaii. And you fly back round trip to the Caribbean through the United States. That's going to be 30,000 miles. That's our little secret. We could talk about that all day. All right, time to wrap up for the evening. Um, I'm going to let Melody pick the best question. Remember, um, let's actually, let's do this. So if you want to win six months of Award Wallet Plus, go ahead in the comments right now and type in Award Wallet so that I know who is still here at the end of the video watching. There's at least 83 of you right now. Um, and then from the people who type Award Wallet, um, Melody's going to pick our winner for the night and then I'll send you a private message or if you message me uh, who wants to win those six months uh, again I use award wallet every single day if you're not using it wow you're really missing out especially with that plus that shows you the expiration points maybe besides this topic I covered tonight earning and burning across partner airlines the second most common question I get is uh, I have miles expiring next week what do I do how do I keep those from expiring Award Wallet will send you an email a month before that says, hey, your points are about to expire. You better do something about that. Um, the easiest thing to do is go through a shopping portal or credit a partner airline flight to your account. Um, you can also buy 1,000 miles. Um, if your American miles are expiring, you can go to awardwallet.com and leave a comment, and they're going to give you five miles. Everybody says, I don't care about five miles, but guess what? That restarts your expiration ticker. So um, really important to know. Besides that, um, oh yeah, I also have, of course, those of you who know I have an affinity for all things gummy. Harry Bow is keeping me company tonight, along with my uh, really fancy 2012 Old Forester birthday bourbon. Oh boy, that's pretty good. So join in next week, same time, Tuesday at 9 uh, p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I'm going to talk about earning maximum miles when dining out. So there are a few apps, a few tricks that I want you to know. When you go out to eat, when you uh, pay for all your buddies' tickets, so that way you can earn all the miles, um, I want you to earn a minimum of 10 points per dollar spent at restaurants. Thanks so much to everybody for joining in Travel Hacking 101 Live. The group's blowing up. I can tell you that i got great things going on in the future. So many of you asked uh, for version 2 of the luggage tags that I've just had the design and uh, approved today. Really excited about um how those are going to look, uh, they're going to go on pre-sale soon. We have online webinars coming up. 
We have uh, off-hole communities being built. We've got moderator training in progress. Lots going on. Every day in the group, come back uh, over 120 posts now a day. I think I'm getting really great time. And uh, always remember, if you want to support me, if you want to support the group, please uh, consider getting your next credit card through the links in the pin post at the top of the group. Uh, only do it if your FICO score is over 700. Only do it if you can meet minimum spend. And only do it if you're going to pay off your credit card in full every month. Don't pay 25% interest. Be smart with your FICO score. Uh, I love this group and the effort it requires. Thanks, Melody, for moderating tonight. And uh, we're going to catch everybody back uh, next week at the same time. See you then.